Welcome to the Computer Vision for Digital Humanists video class. Um, this first video will be an introduction to the course so you know what you're going to learn and what topics we're going to cover. In this course you will learn um, computer vision and deep learning basics. We are aware or we are expecting that you might not be um, that uh, comfortable with machine learning terms yet, so we hope to provide a short introduction. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough if you've never heard about any machine learning before, but I hope it will give you enough of a start to be able to follow and then you might have to look up your own resources if you want to dive deeper. Then we're going to tell you um, how to create your own ground truth for supervised learning. This is a skill that um, isn't commonly found in tutorials. Many tutorials show you how deep learning works in the coding part, but they don't show you how to create your dataset, because most of the time you work with datasets that already exist. However, once you want to apply it to your own research, you need to be able to create your own dataset. Then we will also talk to you about how to interpret and evaluate results from computer vision algorithms. Because if you put some data into an algorithm, probably something is going to come out. However, you need to be sure that your um, algorithm actually learned something. You need to find out what it learned. You need to be able to reflect on it, else you won't be able to actually do research with it. Mm. Then we will give you guidelines on how to best handle humanities data within computer vision. We will see image management with the Tropy software, uh, pre-processing your data set in Python and then obviously also a training uh, model in Python. And we will move from a first hello world, uh, so-called mini model, to a real life uh, machine learning workflow. So uh, we will look in some more detail in our sessions. So the first session is going to be machine learning for computer vision and introduction to terms and concepts. This was also initially called the glossary and I will be following the computer vision glossary prepared by our colleague Angelos who will be teaching lots of this school. And we will learn some basics such as what is machine learning and how does it work. Mm, important terms such as ground truth, loss function and many of the terms we will be using all the time and we hope that you won't be lost. Mm, some digital imaging basics such as uh, how an image is made up of pixels and then how we train the data using vectors and tensors. And then we will also obviously learn some terms for the central computer vision methods such as image segmentation. In the next session, we will give you a historical overview uh, of computer vision. It's called History of Computer Vision, a Timeline, and it will be taught by uh, Nicolas René. And the topics will be uh, simulating vision, the highs and lows of AI, the AI winters, and basically a historical overview from the Perceptron in 1958 to AlexNet in 2012 that marked a big turning point. Uh, we will talk about the rise of convolutional networks, so-called CNNs, and the deep learning revolution of the last decade. Then we will start into our first practical exercise. It's called Get the Data, and in this first practical we will create a ground truth dataset, and it is for training an image classifier to distinguish photos taken in the 19th and 20th centuries, respectively. This is a binary classification task. And you will see in the method section that is going to follow later that there are many different types of computer vision problems, not just binary classification. But in order to achieve this uh, binary classification of our first Hello World example, we will first explore a CSV file containing image metadata as a pandas data frame in Python. So in this course we expect that you have a basic working knowledge of Python and you can uh, use pandas or will um, look up the skills you need uh, to progress uh, on your own. In this exercise we will identify the type of data contained in the data set, we will check for missing values, we will identify which data we need from this data set because most of the time uh, the data set creation and the analysis are not necessarily happening in the same project. So somebody might create a data set for their own purposes and then you want to do machine learning on it. But 
since somebody created this data set with different needs, you might have to adjust a little bit. So, for example, we want to exclude unnecessary data. Oftentimes, uh, in a historical uh, digitization project, we will enrich the data with as much information as we can, but some um, data, for example, some of the photos in our data set, uh, don't have sufficient metadata for us to progress. In uh, the digital humanities uh, part of the project, obviously you want to retain all the data that you have. But in the machine learning part, we can't keep data where we don't have sufficient information. Mm, the second exercise is the hello world, or we also call it the mini model. And there we will load the data that we have just prepared in the session before, and that we have pre-processed, or we will actually continue some of the pre-processing. We will create a first mini model um, so that you will just be able to just quickly run your first model in as an IPython uh, Jupyter Notebook. And then we will train the model with ground truth data and see if it has learned anything. But we will explore this later in more detail in a, what we call the large model. The next practical exercise is data management with Tropy. When you're working with image data and you are responsible for, for example, creating the metadata and so on, you might want to use a data management software and Tropy is a good open source uh, software to do that. And uh, this is what we're going to show you briefly. The next is a lecture and it's called Taxonomy of Methods or How is Your Problem Called? There our uh, computer vision uh, expert Angelos Nicolaou will uh, dive into what types of methods exist in computer vision. Like I said before, with the binary classification, this is by no means the only type of problem. And each of these problems, depending on, well, you need to know what is my problem? What do I want to do with my data? What is the computer vision name for that? Or maybe do I need a pipeline uh, consisting out of multiple of these methods? Um, so we will see a few concepts such as supervised learning, uh, convolutional neural networks. Again, if you still have trouble with these terms, no worries, we were going to talk about that in the intro and the glossary session. We will uh, look at back error propagation and gradient descent, hardware considerations for training, image classification datasets, and concepts such as knowledge transfer, and then the different methods such as uh, classification versus regression, uh, in classification, we will look at, briefly at word spotting and texture. We will see metric learning, Siamese networks, object detection with YOLO, the you only look once, segmentation with UNET, and image generation, we will only touch upon that briefly, uh, with adversarial samples, style transfer, and so-called GANs, the generative adversarial networks. We'll also hear about autoencoders and more. The second lecture is going to be on performance evaluation and epistemology. So in the humanities, it doesn't suffice if you just understand basically how to run a model. Often these computer vision tutorials just show you this is how you run it, just do it the way that we say. But if you really want to do uh, good humanities research, you need to kind of understand what's happening and First of all, on the engineer's perspective, what is the method doing? How can we improve the method? And then also, does it make sense with the data? Um, this is why we will see the different perspectives on machine learning by the engineer and the humanist. Mm, we will talk about evaluation metrics, such as accuracy, precision, recall, and the F-score. We will uh, look at binary versus multi-class classification, uh, how to interpret a confusion matrix, and also data visualization techniques such as PCA principal component analysis. The next session is um, something in between the practical and the theory lesson. It's called Off the Shelf Computer Vision Tools for Digital Humanities Research. And so it is based on different Jupyter notebooks in which you can learn the following skills. And these are uh, meant as some sort of a buffet. Basically, you can pick uh, something that you're interested in. Many of them or some of them work with early modern book pages. The first uh, skill that you can try out is how to build an image segmentation pipeline for early modern book pages. 
and this will define a few functions and show you how it works in principle and then there's an exercise that you have to solve on your own. Mm, the same goes for how to find structural matches between images for image search, how to work with homography matrices, how to detect faces with a pre-trained deep learning um, as a case of uh, object detection and image classification with deep detect. The next practical exercise that is more directly related to what we've been doing before, this is the continuation of the mini model and the data preparing exercise. It's called exploring the large model. Uh, in this we're going to uh, uh, load the data we have prepared and pre-processed earlier. We will create our first real model with some more detail. Uh, we will train the model with our ground truth data and use advanced techniques such as data augmentation that you will also uh, learn a bit more about later. And then we will monitor the training using TensorBoard. What is going on in the different epochs? Uh, when does a model, for example, overfit? And when has it reached its optimum um, learning peak? And so on. And uh, towards the end of this school, we will also look into applications of uh, computer vision in the digital humanities. Uh, this next talk is called State of the Art Projects in the Digital Humanities and it's going to provide you with essentially a literature review on the current state um, of the art uh, in computer vision within the digital humanities. We will look at uh, distant viewing as a new research paradigm um, that is kind of comparable to distant reading and text analysis. And then we will see how computer vision is used in different fields, such as archaeology, media studies, history and more. And then we will, obviously, as we look at it, see how some of these methods and um, techniques are used on which types of problems and so on. And we will also briefly touch on the ethics of computer vision. Uh, the last talk is going to be uh, a discussion between two of our presenters. Uh, a humanist and an engineer, we've already touched upon earlier on the different perspectives of the humanir, uh, humanist and the engineer. And um, it's called Negotiating Real World Projects, Computer Vision and the Age in Conversation. And in this project, the teachers will give you an insight into the daily realities of their interdisciplinary collaboration in the ERC DDIP project that is happening at the center here in Graz. Yeah, so have fun with the school and um, I hope this will help you in your own research projects.